What's up, rockers all across the world? I'm with the man, the myth, the legend, the heart, or the vision of 18 Visions. <laughs> How are you? <laughs> James, Justin, dude, this is the final day. Final day of the tour, man. Yes. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> You're like, oh, God, yes. It's, uh, <laughs> yeah, man, it's just, uh, it's, it's different for me now than it was, you know, just having a normal life and then doing tour show life and then diving back into normal life and back into tour life within the span of like days and so it's just this like it's changing years yeah it's just quick. like instant you know so it's uh you get in the zone of touring and then you kind of like go back home you get in the zone at home and then you're back out on the road but um that's just kind of like the model we have to work with these days so it's just you try to adapt and when you get home, adapt. And yeah, just take it one day at a time, I guess. Yeah. Well, it's a good, and this is your first major U.S. tour, as you were saying, since like 07, major wise. You guys yeah. done a few pop up shows, yeah. like Brick Break, Brick Chain, you know, the classics, Glass House, and like that. Yeah, what's easy for us is like three or four shows in a weekend, weekend um, runners, yeah. fly home, fly back out, three or four more shows. A couple of us have jobs, careers, lives at home. Yeah. That just, you know, we have some freedom, but also, you know, not the freedom to go out for like a month yeah. or two months. Yeah, whatever. Um, so, yeah, it's just, you know, trying to find pockets that make sense for us um, and, and, you know, find markets and just everything that we can and do to work and work around stick to your gun schedule. And, yeah, all that stuff. So. so what made you guys want to do this now, this 20 year big US US tour? First leg, then in July, a little break, then picking it back up in August. What made you guys want to like, fuck it, we're going to do this? Uh, so stick to your gun schedule. Oh, okay. Yeah, <laughs> well, pretty much, honestly. Uh, working around that and, you know, they're a full-time band, so trying to find, you know, pockets that are more spread out. Ideally, you know, one or two a month weekends would be, be good, but with their schedule and how crazy it is, we kind of had to cram more yeah. into like a condensed space. So, yeah, that's kind of why, yeah. And the first leg back in July, you had CU Space Cowboy, Wrist Meat Razor, and, and Chamber. Chamber. Yep. They were all phenomenal bands, especially CU Space Cowboy. Wrist always has my love. Um, and then this first leg, you had End and uh, Wrist Meat Razor. That's it, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. So went out final night. Yeah. So awesome, man. All the bands were great. Um, and you were in Garden Amp last night, and then you yeah. were up in Northern California, I believe, the night before. Yeah. Yeah, Santa yep. Cruz. Yep, Santa Cruz. Yeah. Was it at the. Um, Catalyst. Yeah, Catalyst, yep. OG Catalyst. Were you guys main room or the side stage? Uh, we were in the smaller room, which okay. is sweet. Yeah, I mean, super intimate. Always prefer to play a smaller room. The energy is just yeah different, you know. Love Catalyst. OG, yeah. if you're in NorCal, Catalyst is like one of the best venues up there. Or the new, there's a new one popping up. Um, uh, you know the guys in Vatican. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the X Bar in Cupertino. Okay. I guess it's in some new hardcore like rock venue that has popped up. They were because when they were on tour, Spite. They stopped there and they were telling me about that. And I guess Dying Wish is playing there too. Okay, I haven't heard of that one yet. Yeah, I guess it's new. It just recently popped up. I'm like, what? No, I can't another one. But hey, need more. They need more venues. Yeah, yeah for sure. Like, I, everyone needs more venues. Yeah. Especially in OC. Hey, rest in peace, Slide Bar, OG. Yeah. Uh, we only got Chain Reaction left. Really? Observatory. Oh, Observatory, yeah. 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 But they always get like main big acts. Well, they've got a small room there that's the really sick. Yeah. 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 I always prefer that over the same. Sounds better. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, like going back into this now, I guess it's a perfect way to talk about it. 20 years of vanity. <laughs> Crept up on us, man. Like we were planning tour dates and Josh, um, who, you know, wasn't a part of the band back then was like, Hey guys, you, you know, it's 20 years of vanity. And this is after we'd already started kind of mapping out a set list and talking about support bands. He's like, dude, we should do a vanity set. And we're just like, okay, it sounds cool. It sounds a little overwhelming. Like, how can we make that work? Right. And so Keith was, um, we don't, we don't work with a bass player. So we run all the bass on tracks. And, uh, so Keith kind of tracks all that stuff, uh, maps out drums. And so because he was already doing this stuff, it was like, hey, why don't we re-record the songs? We're going to play them anyways. Half of it's almost done. We just need to do the vocals. Yeah. And so 
kind of like, hey, yeah, let's re-record it and, you know, launch it digitally and do some, like, limited physical copies and, yeah, boom, here we are. Dude, that's a smart way. I mean, so basically, you wanted to do two first and you're like, you know, fuck it, just re-record the whole thing. Yeah, yep. Did you guys do it all at home or did you want to just do it? All at home. That's awesome. Yeah, it's just kind of how we, how we program. We're self-funded, so we don't have, like, really much of a budget to work with. Everything's done digitally. Which is amazing, um, then, knowing that you guys re-recorded it yourselves. Yeah. Huge freaking pops. Yeah, it it's all, all Keith, man. So knowing that he had to record the bass, map out and, and place drums, create clicks, do guitars so that all that stuff can go into the drum feed, into the ears, it's like, that's all done. So let's just record the vocals, mix it, and master it, put it out. Damn. Well, how did it feel then going back into those, those full curtain notes and revisiting, uh, what was it like? going back to the lyrics, seeing the whole album again? Oh, yeah, it was awesome. Um, I think the part that irked me the most was how little space I gave the music back then. It's like, I write and like record over like everything back then, right? And like nowadays, it's like I want to hear this guitar part do its thing, right? I don't need to write and sing over this. And so we found a couple of spaces where we could kind of pull back on the vocals a little bit and let the music kind of shine through and give it like a different feel. Um, but for the most part, you know, it's all it's all the same, like kind of all, all the same mapping, the song structure, arrangements and stuff like that. And it was just really fun to go back and do these, you know, 20 years later, I feel like I'm a better vocalist now and just know what I want to do with the song and the vocals and the parts and, and how to like attack yeah. the lyrics from like, you know, a more like emotional um, angle, like with the delivery and everything. Exactly. Yeah. It was because you matured as a musician, though. like after so long, but also the news music you guys have been putting out, you understand a, a general knowledge of music theory and then going into it, you can redesign this how you want to sound. Right. Yeah. And then too, with new music, I mean, I guess ever since Obsession, we were sending demos back and forth with Vanity. I don't think we did that. Maybe we brought like a, a tape recorder into the rehearsal space and like would record it. But otherwise, I think we were just going in there and everything was by memory. So like I would like write vocals on the spot and then lyrics on the spot and have to just go over it rep like with repetition to like ingrain it and then hopefully once the studio rolls around you're not forgetting what was going on with like 10 yeah. or so songs yeah because i don't really think we we're doing our own like homemade demos back then damn yeah do you guys think you'll do kind of like what events did for uh waking the fallen do that double sided thing one the remastered one and then including the original one as well it's like one complete pack so people can hear the difference yeah so we did that so um we did do a double LP. Um, one one record is the new recordings, and the other record is the old recordings. Nice. So yeah, yeah, it's a beautiful way for fans to like appreciate the whole different. Go right. through the original and then do the remaster. And how you guys did it. Sure. Yeah. Now we're well, going back. Yes, in O2, and you kind of touched about it a little bit. I mean, what was your guys' mind frame back then? You know, twenty years ago when we were recording Vanity, like you said, you had a tape recorder and that was it. You were just pushing music down to put music down. Yeah, and then yeah, it was like riffs upon riffs like I don't think it was until the very end of that writing process did songs start to come in with like more structure yeah right parts started repeating um, it was just I got a riff I got a riff too I got a riff too okay just let's repeat it oh it was just Frankensteining parts and just that's why we had five minute songs we're just where does it end you know type thing um, so I think too it was our first time working with like an actual like producer, not just like a dude that had a studio and was like recording you. So, um, so I think he was well, like every, you know trying to like push things, things a little differently so in like vocals and stuff like that. Time. Yeah. So. Now I guess the good question for you is, you said you matured a musician, recording technology now has evolved beyond. Like you said, you can record at home now, made a whole album by yourself, put you guys put it together from this this huge twenty year. Yeah, how, how have you seen the evolution of recording as a musician? Like, has this really improved musicians for the greater and good? Um, it's difficult to say, right? Because when we were younger, everything was like done in a more like live sense. And yeah. that's because most of it was like low budget, 
time constraints. You had to know you your had parts, to you had to go in there get in and get out, right? So like in a sense that made you better. But now everything is to a grid, it's to a click. So as a guitar player, you really have to hone in. As a bass player, drummer, everything's got to be like really, really locked in. And you can fix any parts you want just like that. You can fix them, yeah. Um, but ideally, you're trying to lock into, you know, the metronome. And even as a vocalist, like trying to lock in so like everything's just like in that pocket, like on top of the beat or within the beat. Um, so I would think that it's made me better. I've had to definitely focus more on like getting the vocals spot on where they need to, like if, you know, if it's coming in on the downbeat or something, just getting everything like really, really focused. Um, it's helped me a lot for sure. And now I guess in perfect another segue to it is seeing the evolution of back in 20 years ago, I mean, the OC metalcore, hardcore, Post core scene was a lot more vibrant back then, and with Ben Sibyl, Trey Yu, uh, Mice and Men, you know, everybody down here. Um, what do you think of the scene now? What do you think the OC rock scene, in your point of view, and what is it like now? Um, yeah, it's, I, I think it's different. I mean, I think it's been different for a long time, you know, growing up in like the Orange County metal hardcore scene. No showcase theory there's, anymore. Yeah, there's a lot of camaraderie between the bands and all these kids, everyone knew everyone from everywhere. And it was just this like really strong sense of like unity within the scene. Um, I feel like that's probably, again, like I'm much older. So I still have my group of friends from that era. We still go to shows and we still hang out. But I'm gonna assume that it's probably a little bit different. I don't know if the bands are quite as like incestual as they were back then, you know, everybody was in multiple bands and doing multiple things uh, which kind of brought different bands and different groups of people and fans together I mean I'm not as in touch and in tune with like the local scene obviously just being older and uh, and whatnot so it's, it's really hard for me to speak on I just know that shows now for me if I'm attending they just have like a different vibe than what they did back then. Yeah. And maybe it's just because I'm older, they have the same vibe. I'm just like not as like entrenched. Um, like I'm not like down in the pit. I'm like not like up front crowd surfing and like stage diving and all this other stuff. Um, I'm more kind of like enjoying the band sonically and musically yeah. and like what they're bringing, right? Um, so yeah, I'm just, it's really, really hard for me to speak on um, in terms of like how different it is or if it's better or worse. That was just such a golden era for music and metal and hardcore. It, it's kind of, it's also, it's like it's unfortunately that era peaked right before the whole social media kicked off. Because I was still during the MySpace era, people sharing stuff and whatnot. But it never really shined in what could have been so many great bands got lost in the shuffle back then during that whole time. You know? Sure bringing up like Poison the Well and stuff like that, like these bands that were so iconic that kind of like phased out by like 05, 06, and just never got to get that boost, that, that potential social media boost like we have now. Right, yeah, it just wasn't, that platform wasn't out there. So it's like, you gain new fans by touring, and that was it, you know, and like doing the right tours. Now, as this whole new era of touring, uh, social media marketing, playing, streams, TikToks, and all that stuff, and seeing now both two I mean, generations and growing up during the MySpace generation and putting your music on there. Yeah. Um, do you think the new social now, media generation of music is a positive for the industry or is it kind of killing off, again, that organic growth? <laughs> uh, there can still be organic growth by going out and like touring, um, but it gives everyone a chance, you know? It gives everyone a chance to have exposure. I'll give it that, you know? Um, you still have to work hard. You still have to like be good at your instruments you know and write good music and you still have to be like kind of like in touch with what's going on in your in your local music scenes and you know you know generating that like awareness like locally but I think it's just it's easier man like that that outreach and connecting with fans um, in different cities states countries it's just that wasn't around you know that wasn't even an option have you guys seen a huge new wave, new generation of fans now from you know, being on Instagram and then going out to the shows, finding new younger fans, new people that found your music after seeing it? It's like the younger crowd. Definitely. I mean, 
just on this tour alone, um, people that loved this record uh, that found it after the band broke up, you know, first time seeing the band, first opportunity, right? Um, and they're connecting with this music that they found because of a friend or just digging through the archives, yeah. right? And like trying to go back in time yeah. and like what influenced this band I love or this motionless and white band, like where did their name come from? You know, I've heard the name ET Visions tossed around. Oh, it came from that band, that song. Okay, cool. I'm going to go check them out. Just stuff like that. It's, you know, cool how, you know, people, newer fans have, have found us and that they're like eager to see us. Which is so great. The vanity, even from uh, Obsession and everything, it's all coming in to like, you still pop up on like different playlists all the time. You put in like a radio station for a trade or something like that, or a uh, static lullaby or yeah. whatnot. You guys will pop in that rotation. And that's another thing too, is those, um, those, those Spotify, Apple playlists on these streaming platforms, you know, that just, you know, they throw these bands into the algorithm and I hear a new band, I'm like, oh, this is sick. What is this? Who is this band? I need to check that record out, right? So I've discovered new stuff that way too. Yeah, that's the positive. One of the positive ways of how the whole social space with streaming. Sure. Forgetting about the pay stuff from streaming. It's still a great way for everyone to find new bands and then going, oh crap, they have new music out. Yeah, absolutely. Like, I.e. your guys' new records and stuff like that, like the EP Inferno in 2020. Um, also putting stuff out in 2017. And then your guys' really cool, I guess, compilation cover album. Yeah, cover album. Yep, yep. Killer covers, which has Allison Chains, Deep Cut. Um, also Nine Inch Nails, Terrible yeah. Eye, phenomenal. Yeah, with that we just wanted to go with, um, well Keith had been like messing around, he's always like recording stuff at home. And he started recording all these songs, these rock songs and these hardcore songs from the 90s and he wanted me to sing on some of them, I'm like well what do you want to do with it? And he's like, oh I don't know, I'm like well let's do an album and like let's pick the songs that like kind of influence us yeah. you know, in the band. And so. That's kind of how... Visions of Disorder, too. That's a freaking OG throwback. Yeah, yeah, big influence on our band. So, yeah, taking those bands and and uh, trying to do them, you know, justice and, you know, pay, you know, an, an honor to them. Uh, for and still having your flair to us. Like yeah. The 18 Vision flair version of it on there. Yeah, yeah. A little... With the hardcore stuff, we wanted to um, honor that in its truest form possible, right? not do too much to deviate from the pureness of what it was, yeah. right? Uh, with the rock stuff, you know, putting our twist on it, maybe a little bit more, yeah. And, and you kind of touched upon a little bit about the breakup in 07 and coming back in 2017. I don't need to talk about the breakup, but what made you want to come back after a 10 year gap, want to come back and bring back ETV? Yeah, so Keith had been working on music and well, we had been working on music in 2012 and again in 2014, loosely discussing bringing the band back. It never happened. He had reached out to me early 2016 at a time where I wasn't really working on anything musically. And so we got back together, uh, just me and him, started working on some stuff. And it felt really 18V to me. Um, and so... We asked Trevor and Ken if they wanted to be a part of it. Trevor said yes. Ken couldn't do it. And so the three of us were just, we wrote an album. And then we just kind of discussed, hey, what is this? Um, do you want to play shows? Yes. We'll, are we going to cover 18 B songs? Yeah, it would be weird not to. I was like, all right, we're going to play. We're going to cover 18 B songs. Three of us were in 18 B. The record sounds like 18 Visions. <laughs> Who are we kidding? So might as well just bring it back. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Who are we kidding? So. And you guys had a great kind of welcome back. You guys did first hometown shows, and you were even on Notfest, Ozfest, the yeah. whole tour and whatnot. Had a really good resurgence back in those. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah, good time for us for sure. Um, I think I was at that one. I forgot the, all those Ozfest and Notfest stuff just kind of blur together. Yeah, sure. Um, I was talking with my buddies and the Pond and Bernie body. I'm like, what year was that? And it's like it's all <laughs> everyone was the same, but still different. Um, but going into Inferno in 2020, you guys see that was pretty killer that that's it reminds me recording wise was that recording at home as well or yeah, yep, yeah 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 keith yep i want to say it sounds similar recording wise but in a great way like it's a very still different but you can hear the similarity yeah yeah so um again new music man we just we want to be creative and um he had a really cool idea for this concept record and so we went with that 
Um, it allowed us to kind of go back to like pre-vanity, even like pre until the ink, um, more like late '90s. Yesterday's time killed, where the band was like really, really dark and like vibey, and was able to kind of pull that out and like modernize it, yeah. right? And like maybe make it a little more metal, a little more extreme. Um, Definitely almost bordered on uh, Yeah, a little a little darker with the lyrics, and yeah, it was a fun record to make. And, and the merch so, walk too. Yeah, yeah, just creating creating a yeah, just an entire like vibe. Yeah, it's fun fun for us. Yeah. Now going forth, you guys think you're going to stay on that trend from Inferno going after after this all done? Uh, well, we have a plan to follow that up. So um, yeah, I think musically. It'll probably still be pretty dark. Uh, yeah, we're just we just want to be creative, man, and like keep pumping out songs and music. It's I think playing is fun, but the creative part we can kind of do from home and at our own pace, and yeah. it's just yeah, it's just really really fun. And I have to go to the studio, pump everything, set each other because you're doing roles at home too. Uh, yeah, yeah, everything is just. Pretty much in like one or two spots, and Release close music when you need to. Close to home, and yeah, we're just on our own, like you know, timetable. And no uh, label, correct? No. Yeah, no. all independent, still having yeah. everything come back. But it's more. It sounds like it's more like you guys are not having to push anything out. You're just enjoying fucking doing it. Yeah, that's that's really all it is. Yeah, yeah I mean, if we wanted a label, we could have a label and probably sell more records and maybe gain some more traction, but. It even sounds like with this tour, it sounds like you know, this is just for fun. We're doing yeah. this for us and the fans. It's always for fun for us. Yeah, <laughs> it's not our. Jo- well, for Josh, it's a job still because he does stick to your guns yeah. and he has music. But for me and Keith, it's it's hobby. Yeah, um, it's always fun to ask though. It's like, what are you currently listening to? What's on going through your Apple Music, Spotify? Oh, man. What's uh, what's on the show? Um, well, I mostly listen to music in the gym. So that would be like Alice in Chains playlist I got, uh, Harm's Way, um, Code Orange, and I listen to a lot. Just heavier stuff in the gym, like kind of gets me like you know, amped. And then honestly, it's kind of weird, but like maybe a little bit of like house, like house music yeah, thrown yeah, in there, yeah. sprinkled in there. Yeah, you'd be surprised. Everyone's always surprised when artists say what they listen to. Some people like one of my a good songwriter friend of mine, Sean James, uh, when he's playing a chain reaction to one, he's like, "Yeah, man, I listened to hip hop before the show." Yeah, <laughs> like you never. It's but it's also the creative process. You're sure. listening to something new and like, "Oh shit, I like this beat or I like that verse or whatever you're doing." It's yeah, like, it all. That's what artists are. You're evolving as an artist. Yeah, I listen to a little bit of everything for the most part. Nice, dude. It's and so what's coming after, after the story? You're gonna rest up. And you talked about you guys are gonna kind of follow footsteps of Inferno. Is there a time frame? You're gonna do a single EP, full album? Uh, no time frame. No like direct plans. Just probably start finishing up on some music that we started on before this. Yeah. The vanity thing kind of threw a curveball at us and like a little wrench into some stuff that we were working on. So we had new music already like pumping out, and then vanity just was like a huge like pump the brakes on everything yeah, focus yeah, on that yeah. and then like we'll probably a take a focus came yeah out we'll probably take a couple weeks and then you know dive back in even like the re- i think the remaster's on your number one streaming right now yeah yeah okay yeah, number one brand on there sweet so uh, everyone's catching on to it <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um but i'm looking forward to show tonight it's gonna be killer last night uh bummed i missed the oc hometown show but i knew i was gonna make 1721 or 720 um but it's going to be an amazing show. The last night, and you guys have to rest up by me. Yeah. <laughs> some, some much needed rest, for sure. Um, but please follow them on socials. Yes, they do have Instagram. Um, even though they've always been kind of silent, on the, you got to know when they're playing a show. They have Instagram. They're always posting their shows up. Uh, I'll have the links down for everything below. Also, streaming for their whole new re recording, remaster of Vanity. Also, the new EPs as well. So please give these OGs, OC OGs, hardcore, metalcore. This is all metal, just metal in general. Give them a follow and just be on the lookout for the music. Sweet, awesome.